Let's try making some dollar store pot holders with this Cricut infusible ink. These are 100% polyester from the Dollar Tree, and that means that you can do sublimation, infusible ink, and all of those fun little crafts on this. Create your project on Cricut Design Space. I got this cut file off of Creative Fabrica. Once it's sized to where you want it, go ahead and select make it. Make sure to mirror image. With this infusible ink, remember we mirrored our image. So when we stick it down, the, again, the shiny kind of plasticky feeling side is going to go against our mat. And the part that is the print we're looking to have on our actual project is going to be facing up. So these sheets are 12 by 12. This is what it looks like, that browny kind of dull color. It's supposed to look like this. It comes out black after the fact. Like any other Cricut project, it's just going to go on our mat. We're going to load it up. Now for materials, head on over to browse all materials and you can actually just look up infusible ink. Perfect. This is the one we're going to be using. Now remember, infusible ink is thicker than vinyl. So it does come out looking a little bit like paper. It's kind of similar to like a very light cardstock feel and it is a little bit trickier to weed and I'm going to go ahead and weed this all out because it's gonna take me a bit and then I'll be back. I finished weeding it out. This is the front side of it that will be against the press and then this is the part that has the ink. Now it does come with the transfer sheet already on there which is perfect. I am noticing that the eye shifted a little bit so I'm going to push that back down I don't want it on the seam at all or else it's not going to properly press. Now this one I am going to use my heat press for this because I want it to get a really even press. You could use like an iron um, a Cricut Easy Press as well. Arguably you could use other heat sources but for this you want a really even press for the full entire time so that it properly gets the ink transferred into whatever you're doing. And yes, I'm using a decent amount of heat tape because I want to make sure it's on there really well. So there we go, we have it on there, it's time to press it. So with Cricut Infusible Ink, we're doing it at 385 degrees for 60 seconds. I am using the heat guide off of Cricut's website. So definitely do that, put in your material and all of that fun stuff. So go ahead, close it and set the timer. We'll be back once it's done. And I'm going to peel this up. You're supposed to wait until it cools down, but I'm a little nervous that it is all messed up. Wow, it looks really good actually. I think once it cools down, it will flatten a little bit, but it actually showed up very nicely. The reason I did infusible ink is because if you use heat transfer vinyl, it is going to make it trickier when you go to actually use a pot holder and it's activated by heat, right? So then it's going to start peeling up way quicker. Infusible ink actually gets transferred inside the garment, so it's in there now. It's not going anywhere, which is great, but you have to press it for longer and with this backing, it's a little tricky. So if you have one that's just a solid backing, that would be perfect. It was a success, and I do think it would actually look good with this color as well. It would be a little bit more dull, but I like that it came out very vibrant on here. I, I'm a very big fan of this one, so definitely a win. Hey crafters, it's Shay, and for today's video, we are going to be making these cute little Santa treat trays. So what we're going to do is first create some type of guide for my design. I went ahead and I measured out the size of cutting board. So I'm going to select unlock and I'm going to make the height match and then the width was 13. So to make this into a guide, what you need to do is go to this operation button, click the drop down and change to guide. This is going to make sure that my Cricut does not cut this out. It makes it this pink border, but it gives me quite literally a guide or a template to be able to know exactly the border and the outline that I need to create into. Like I can't have my decal go outside of this or it won't fit. So what I'm going to do is go to one of the images that I've already uploaded from Creative Fabrica. I of course will leave it linked down below as I always do, but let me go in and pull this one. So we have this and I could cut it out on a larger Cricut mat. If you have the 12 by 24 mat, that is perfect, then you should be good to go. But we're going to change it up a little bit for someone that maybe doesn't have that mat. So what I'm going to do is put it to size. I'm going to go up here and select ungroup. So now this gives me access to different parts of the design. So I'm gonna move my guide here and I am going to go ahead and combine these ones together 
we're going to just select attach. I'm going to move it aside and I'm going to combine these ones together. So now if I have just a 12 by 12 mat, I can easily cut these out without having to go out and purchase a larger mat because otherwise your Cricut will say, uh oh, it's too big. And then I can kind of rearrange them and, and make them fit once they're cut. Now I do wanna go in there and add the children's names. So I'm going to go on over to text and I'm going to type out their names. So we're going to do this and I'm just going to make it a different font. Actually, I don't really mind that font, but I think we could do something a little bit cuter. I am going to do something that is a little bit thicker of a font so it's easier to weed. We could shrink this down and that fits perfectly. So I really like how that looks and I'm ready to go ahead and cut this out. So we're going to go on over to make it. Now you're gonna see it's going to be super jumbled up. Okay, we have parts here, there, whatever. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and start cutting it out on separate mats and that's what I'm going to have to do if I only have a 12 by 12 mat. If you have a 12 by 24 mat, you're able to kind of stretch it out long ways, but we're going to do it the more budget friendly option for those crafters that don't have the larger mats. So select continue and I'm going to select vinyl as my material and start cutting this all out. I'm gonna go ahead and cut up the white and then I went in and changed it to red and black. So three colors. I did have to go a little slowly to pull up the letters because as you can see the corners of this tray are a little ribbed. As you can see, even if you have a Cricut Joy, you can do a project like this. You can see here that I went ahead and I sliced out, ungrouped, and welded certain parts together. That way it would fit on my mat. If you have the Cricut Joy, you could do the exact same thing. Depending on what type of project you're looking at doing, that could be more tedious than not. But for something like this, it's fairly easy. It's maybe about five or six cuts, and you can make a beautiful project like this, even with a Cricut Joy. I did use my Cricut Maker for today's project, but Cricut Explore, whichever one you have, as long as it can cut vinyl, you're good. I wanted to mention that because I do get questions sometimes from our lovely Cricut Joy users asking, hey, can you share projects that we can do as well? Well, yes, I sure can. And this one is actually one of them that you can do as well. So that is a really great little option for any of us crafters. I love how quick and easy this project was. This is such a fun one to be able to gift to someone and these sell very, very well. So I also do a version of this on heat transfer vinyl with some fabric placemats that I pick up at my local Dollarama, Dollar Tree. You can even get ones that are polyester at the Dollar Tree and add some heat transfer vinyl, sublimation, infusible ink, do the exact same thing and those sell really well as well. So something to look into if you have a Cricut business or you're looking to make some side money with your Cricut, these are great ones. People love personalized items for their children, grandkids, gifts. So it's a really good one to gift and then make and sell as well. I will see you in tomorrow's Craftmas video. If you didn't know, we're posting a crafty video every single day in the month of December to get you crafting with your Cricut. Whether you're a new Cricut crafter or intermediate Cricut crafter, just looking for some ideas. For this project, we are making a mini charcuterie board. So I picked this up at my local Dollar Tree. It's just a glass cutting board. It does have these little kind of pads at the bottom. So some of them are removable. These ones do not seem like they are, but if you are able to pick up the ones that are removable and stick them back on later, that would be ideal. This is the largest one I had, so I went with it. And then I hopped on over to Cricut Design Space and I started making my own little SVG. So I pulled a bunch of random images from Creative Fabrica. I picked up some stuff off of Google. I made my own little SVGs and fonts and I created this little cut file that I just designed. I also made a template or guide in the background so that I knew the size of my cutting board, which is seven by seven. And then I welded everything together. I want it all to be the same color. So we're going to do this. Now I'm putting it on the back side. So that means I need to mirror my image. So when I go into make it, I need to make sure I'm selecting mirror. So that's perfect. It's mirrored and we are going to select continue. 
Now I'm ready to load my Cricut and get started. I am selecting vinyl for my base material and we are good to go. I'm going to cut this out the same way I just did and then I'll be back once it's done cutting. This one is going to be a fun one to weave, that's for sure. It looks like a mess, but uh, we're gonna go for it. So I was able to take my weeding pick and pop off the little pads from the bottom and then I can stick them back on later, which is awesome. It's going to make life a little bit easier. So I do think I'm going to need my weeding pick for this one as well. It looks like it's going to be a fun one. It's actually not too bad. This vinyl is pretty good to weed. It's pretty easy. And I'm already having some little thin pieces get stuck. So with weeding, it's really great when you can just kind of like snip it and remove this part because if this part starts sticking back down onto another piece that you haven't weeded out yet, that's when the troubles come and it's really hard to pull it off kind of like here so i kind of cut as i go for those bigger pieces that i need to get down perfect we saved that little flower that should be good perfect so remember you can reuse transfer tape which is a great little money saving tip for you cricut crafters I didn't know that for the first while and I would just use it once and throw it away and now I'm like, why? Why did I do that? There we go. Let's see. It's on there fairly well. Now this is a lot of little pieces to it so we do want to go a little slower to make sure it's on there properly like that. This is so fun. I would love to personalize some of these. This was really cheap too. I think it was about $1.50, maybe even less. This would be fun to personalize with like the family's name and all of that. You could seal this as well. The reason I'm putting this on the back is so that it is still food safe on the top side. If I were to put this vinyl on the top of it, I would not suggest putting food on it. So thankfully I was able to get a glass one and put the vinyl on the bottom. If anything peels up, just push it back down like I've just done and keep going. Now remember, you're gonna have to go really slow, especially because this is a bit of a larger decal that I've created. So there are a lot of little pieces to it and you don't wanna accidentally rip some of it off when you're pulling it. As I'm going, I'm just checking all parts of the decal, making sure I'm not ripping anything off. I'm going to go ahead and stick these little ones back on. You can also use some glue for it if you want. Mine still have a little sticky bit on it, but there we go. We're gonna flip it over and wow. We have the finished little charcuterie board here. It is absolutely adorable. I cannot believe that I made this project for under $5. I'm going to be gifting this to my best friend for her birthday. She loves making these type of boards and I think this will be great for like a little wine and cheese night for the girls. I'm also going to be gifting her something else that we're going to be making for Craftmas. So that's coming up next as well, which will be a really fun one. But I love how this turned out. And could you imagine personalizing this with maybe like the family name? Like if you were to go in and do like the Smiths and do some fun little designs. Wow, oh wow. Remember, this is on the back, which makes the top food safe. It is not dishwasher safe, so we need to hand wash this. You're not gonna wanna soak it, so make sure you're including care instructions. If you want to know how to make those little cards with care instructions, let me know, and I'd be happy to show you how to do that. It's super easy to make, and honestly, you're going to want to do that if you're selling these as well. That way your customers aren't coming back to you like, ah, oh, it all peeled up, and that's because they didn't do the proper care that they need to for these items. So super exciting, and I just cannot wait to gift this to her. How special, ah, I can't believe I made this. I'm so excited. This is by far one of my favorite projects I've ever made. For today's Craftmas video, we are taking one of these dollar store candles and making a cute little decor piece to match with my pink Christmas decor. Now you can do this any theme, it doesn't have to be Christmas, I've done these for Valentine's Day, different gifts for friends, but let's get started. As I mentioned, I picked these up from my local dollar store. Sometimes you're lucky and you find them completely blank. Other times you do have to peel off the design on them. It does come off with some warm water and dish soap. 
For this project, I'm using permanent adhesive vinyl and I'm going ahead and weeding it out while the pink one is cutting. Now the silver vinyl I'm using, I don't know which brand, it's just a random brand off of Amazon that I had in my scraps, but the pink one in the back is tech wrap, so I will leave that down below because that is my favorite vinyl. This one weeds like butter, it is the matte tech wrap vinyl in the 001 series. A lot of you have been asking about the ones that I'm using, so I thought I would address it because I really, really love it and just bought some new ones of it, so I'm really excited to try those ones out as well. Now I'm grabbing my transfer tape, which is actually a little bit of a Cricut hack. I use this clear laminate duck shelf liner. So it's duck brand from Amazon. It's way cheaper and it works even better to use as transfer tape. So once I weed out this pink portion that I have here, just look how easy it weeds out, like beautifully, even with these tiny little letters and little snowflakes that I'm weeding. Just peels right up and then I'm ready to do the transfer. I love using this specific transfer tape. Well, it's not even really transfer tape, contact paper, but I really like it and I reuse it for multiple projects. So I'm going ahead and I'm doing it piece by piece. Now you could have absolutely made it into a full wrap and wrapped it around the candle, but one, I feel like depending on the design that can waste a lot of vinyl, especially if it's a design that's not full and it's kind of like, collaged on there so i decided to do it in parts to save the most amount of vinyl and space also i just prefer to do it this way rather than it bending and folding and getting air bubbles so this is my personal preference but you can absolutely do it in a wrap as well this cut file i got off of creative fabrica as i do for pretty much any cut file svg and font that i use because I am able to sell the items that I make with the cut files and fonts from Creative Fabrica. Definitely a bonus. They also have really good promo right now where you can get 10 free downloads of your choice. It's their free trial. And then after that, it renews for less than $10 a month, which is a really, really good deal. Those of you that have Creative Fabrica already might be thinking, what, did you just say $10? Yes, I said $10, so definitely look into it. But you get 10 free downloads, which is super cool because why not get free cut files, SVG files, and fonts? I'm going ahead and just placing the snowflakes where I think they will look best. This one was really fun, just kind of placing them all around. Now I went with the pink and silver kind of look. I'm really trying to make my Christmas decor and my home decor be pink this year. It's just something little that's been making me feel really good with everything that's been going on. So I was excited to make my own little candle. I did see pretty much this exact thing at Winners and also HomeSense or Marshalls, I believe. And I thought, hey, I can make this for a whole lot cheaper. So I went to the dollar store, grabbed a white candle, peeled it off, and here we have it. It is so cute. I absolutely love it. And again, another little craft project for under $5. What a beautiful gift to give, and I cannot wait to go into tomorrow's Craftmas video. Don't forget, we're posting crafty videos every single day in the month of December, so make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.